difficulties. If you're just joining us, the uh, <laughs> link is just getting sent out right now. Hey, if you're here right now, let us know where you're watching from in the comments. You're probably watching on the YouTube watch page. Can you hit the like button? And we have uh, myself and Benji on the call. We're gonna be talking about how to double your views on YouTube. And that's kind of like a big guarantee, but we actually promise that with this strategy, you'll be able to double your views. But we'll jump into that in just one second. But first of all, let's just kind of, Benji, take it and let people know if you're new to Video Influencers, where we came from and what we're all about. Yeah, sorry about that, you guys. Uh, welcome to Video Influencers. If you guys are new, we're here to help you build your influence, income, and impact with online video. So Sean and I, we've been on YouTube for the last eight years, not only starting a channel, but growing a channel and finding opportunities to uh, create income, build your influence, not just for ourselves, but for other people. I mean, like I can't even count, maybe at least 10, 15 different channels between the two of us, literally billion plus views with all the experience we've got. And we're here to help you do that, not only on YouTube, but on all the social media platforms because we know that video is the way to go. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, talking about online video not just on youtube but on social media in general and we're here for you guys again leave a comment below if you're on twitter hit us up there we'll be trying to respond as much as possible let's get going all right so if you're just joining us this is video influencers thanks for being here if you're watching on the replay and our topic today is how to double your views on youtube so uh if you're watching this and you have a youtube channel if you don't even have one yet this content's still helpful because it's really practical and tactical for you know building your influence and reaching more people with your channel and so we'll dive right into it but a couple things just off off the the top here is a couple of the things that youtube rewards now, YouTube rewards, number one, watch time. So one way to get more views and to kind of grow your channel is to get more people watching your videos, but watch time doesn't just mean a view. Watch time actually means the amount of time people are watching your videos. So your channel has like a total watch time. So actually in one sense, watch time is more important than views. Like you want more minutes on your channel, more hours. Like they want, a YouTube rewards you when you get watch time. Number two, they reward consistency. Like you actually, there's this term kind of like the rich get richer, right? And it's kind of like the those that are already successful get even kind of more successful. That's kind of one of the things with YouTube. Like if you post more videos, just more volume of, of videos going to YouTube, they say, we like you, we like what you're doing. And so they reward consistency. And then lastly, people love content. I mean, content needs to be good, but like, we live in a world where it's all about the content, right? Like your favorite YouTubers, you love it when they post videos and when they don't, you're like, man, where was your video at? And you, you know, you're, you're, you get kind of bummed out. So we're just going to break into the strategies, but here's the big idea and don't let its simplicity fool you. If you want to double your views on YouTube, double your videos. Boom. And you guys, I just want to follow up on that. Why it's so important to YouTube uh, to have really great watch time. Consider this. All the platforms want you to hang out on their channel. So the longer your session is, the longer your eyeballs are on their page, the better it is not only for them, but for you because they're gonna like prioritize not only your channel, but your content. This is not just happening on YouTube. It's happening everywhere with algorithm changes on many different platforms, with people including video more into their content, especially platforms making video available. It's very obvious that they want your attention, especially in this ADD world where people are jumping from one social platform to the other, one website to other, going from their phone to the TV to their computer. It's so important to keep this concept in mind of how long people are viewing. One of the things that I love sharing is TV, the power of TV. I know people are saying like TV is dying, you know, it's all about the Hulus and Netflix, the social media platforms, but the reality is when you watch TV, you're sitting there for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, two hours in front of that TV. That's why there's so many ads still running on TV because the one thing is you still sit there and watch that device. Now, yes, people are on their phones, right? People are distracted. 
that is the truth. People are like fast forwarding through commercials. But the point is you sit there for like two hours at a time. And that's ultimately what the platforms want. So this, when we talk about uh, watch time, uploading consistently, it's all about keeping the user engaged, not just visually, but engaged in the content. And that's why like getting comments, likes, those kind of things are just as important as watch time consistency. And that's why we're challenging you guys to double your video uploads. Because if you can just do that, imagine how much more credibility that uh, the platform in YouTube specifically will give you because you're pulling more people in or potentially can pull more people in. Absolutely. And so this, this is kind of a simple concept, but let's like, just think about this. Let's break it down. Right now, if you have a YouTube channel and you post once a week and your videos get 100 views, the reality is if you went to twice a week, your channel would now start getting 200 views, right? Because your videos get 100 views. So you actually just doubled the amount of views on your channel. You double the amount of activity and that's a signal to YouTube to reward you. So what we've noticed is that when you do this and when we've done this and implemented it and with clients and people that we've helped that as they've upped the amount of videos that they're posting that they don't just get double, but it actually becomes a, a, a greater growth curve. So if you want to double your views, double your videos challenge yourself to be posting more and to up your level of consistency. So of course that brings up the question and we'll jump into our strategies in just a second. Well, yeah, but making videos, it is hard. Like posting videos, it is hard. Like, oh, easier said than done to just like double my videos, you know, like it's, it's hard enough with a busy job and everything else to do all this stuff. So that's why we have some tips really all about consistency. So Benji will kick it off with the first one in just a second. But if you're just joining us, we'd love to hear where you're watching in the comments where we'll read those. We'll also do Q&A in just a second. We're gonna plow through these um, points and then we'd love to get your questions. So definitely comment. And if you can hear this loud and clear, hit the uh, you know like button on YouTube. Thanks so much for being here and share this with somebody who wants to take their YouTube channel to another level this month. So Benji, let's get into the seven strategies mm -hmm. for how to be more consistent and post more consistently. Absolutely, and I love the first tip, which is consider breaking your videos up into smaller segments, okay? This is not just something that we've done, right, and we believe and we've observed. This is actually coming from YouTube. I remember back, way back in 2010, YouTube flew into Seattle. They invited us to the Google office and they showed us this video of somebody shooting a bullet through a piece of paper. It was a seven minute video. It got a lot of views. Like I believe it got like uh, a few hundred thousand views or something. What they did was they looked at where the audience retention was the highest and it was exactly the point where the bullet go through that little piece of paper. Okay. And that was like a 30 second segment. So what they suggested to this uh, creator was pull that video out and make that into a standalone video. So leave your old video up because that's still cool. You know, people obviously liked it, but just put that little segment that people want to watch. We're talking millions of views on that video. That is so powerful. I've never forgotten that example because think of how many videos within a vlog, right? My wife and I, we actually do this right now where we're vlogging our lives. And if there's something that's really fun in that vlog, we'll like pull the, pull it out and put it up into its own upload. Okay. So that's a power of like, if you are a daily vlogger and you got tons of content, but even if you're somebody more specific, like myself, like cooking videos, like how many different segments within the cooking of a recipe can you make into an individual videos? So we're talking about doubling your views right? You can actually talk about uh, the recipe itself and eat the recipe and enjoy and make that a video and talk about why you love, you know, uh, chocolate chip cookies and then show them the recipe. Boom. Real easy. A lot of people like they, they're hung up on like, I got to have a full video from beginning to end. But especially when you're starting, it might be smarter to have these hook videos that are, more, are shorter, more interesting and can reach a greater audience. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're talking about how to double your views. And so that's by doubling your videos. And there's actually a great comment from John Cameron. He says, right now I post four times 
um, a week and I get about 700 views a pop. I feel like if I post more, the views would drop. Well, John's already crushing it. I mean, four times a week is a lot, but I think like he's saying, he's already getting 700 views a pop. So if you added a fifth video, that's another 700 views probably on his channel. Now, maybe if he goes more than that, then that's like two a day. So you're right, John, that could tweak with some things. But I think that the average person is sometimes not even posting once a week. And I would say this, like if you're taking YouTube seriously, you have to commit to posting once a week just to kind of be relevant even in their algorithm. Now there's exceptions to that rule, but you really wanna step it up. And that's kind of why we're here. Like we really wanna challenge you to say, okay, I'm gonna step it up. In fact, for September, we wanna challenge you to double your videos. If you only post one video a, a month, that's two this month. Can you can you can you commit to that? Let us know in the comments. Actually, let us know in the comments how many videos you try like what your current schedule. What is your posting schedule right now? And there's something powerful about typing it out. Let us know in the comments. Um, and if you're watching on the replay or live, thanks so much for being here. Share this with somebody. Benji just talked about the power. Number one, we have seven strategies of breaking your videos into smaller segments, right? So instead of making one 10 minute video, what if that became two five minute videos and went into a playlist. That's a way to actually make it easier to have more videos and then potentially double your views. Now, the second tip we have for you is uh, to create content that reaches beyond your subscribers. And so mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we have like, this is a good tip for vloggers and family vloggers are sometimes like, well, how do I create content to reach new people? Like I do daily vlogs and I have about 300 people watch those a day. And it doesn't really reach beyond them because otherwise people don't know me, you know? And what we encourage is that what if you made like a weekly video or a monthly video that has a little more of a viral nature to it, that has a little bit more of a reach beyond people who know you yet because it's maybe more of a skip, it's more of humor. For family vloggers, it's always, you know, if you throw the kids in the van, you put the GoPro on the dashboard and uh, you have them sing, you know, a Disney song and you edit that up and you try to avoid the copyrights. But, you know, it's some kind of a, a video that could get shared that's not your usual style that could attract more um, people to your channel. There's there's two different, you know, there's multiple different kinds of videos, but two different kinds of videos. One might be serving your tribe, people who already know you but you should be creating videos that are also people who don't know you yet, the kinds of videos that rank in search, the kinds of videos that are like magnets that um, can bring awareness to your channel. Absolutely, I couldn't have said it any better and I'll give you a great example to follow up what Sean just said. Cooking videos. I have a cooking channel, a food loving channel, Benjamin TV. When I create videos, whether it's a recipe video, uh, whether it's you know like uh, reviewing some kind of product, I'm always creating the video as if you just uh, got to my channel for the first time. Yes, I do like to acknowledge my subscribers, but I build the whole video from beginning to end, the way I title it, the way I tag it, and the info box, and just the general concept of the video because you know what? I know the power of creating a standalone video, a video that if there was no channel would still get lots of views because it ranks on search, because people are looking for that recipe. Um, that's one of the powerful things about food videos, like especially recipe videos. People are searching for things, not necessarily looking for like a channel or a food guru. They're just looking for that content specifically. So keeping that always in mind. So we're talking about doubling your views here. This is a very practical way of doing it for just about any channel, even like a vlogger. Like Sean mentioned, we're vloggers, right? And what we've done is actually utilize this technique outside of YouTube where we're putting small bits of content onto Facebook natively to be able to get a new audience. In fact, we've literally almost doubled, outgrown our audience on YouTube on Facebook because of this technique. Yes, absolutely. So if you're just joining us, thanks so much for being here. My name's Sean, I'm on with Benji and we are video influencers. We do a weekly uh, interview show with video influencers as well as we do tips and strategy videos just like this. And um, our challenge for September is that you would double your current production. So we hear 
uh, Philip uh, Motivert uh, posts once a week. So then hit the challenge to him would be to post twice a week and to commit this month. Can you step up? Can you level up your game to say, I'm going to take this more seriously. I'm passionate about this. I can, you know, cut some entertainment or some leisure. I can use some strategies, but I'm going to post more videos because the reality is even if your videos only get five views each, if you post two instead of one, now you have 10 views because your view, you know, you just went from five views to 10. So it's kind of like math and that begins to build momentum, right? So we talked about breaking your videos into smaller segments. We always like to say, like, instead of making one 20 minute video, what if you made a rest, uh, like a four video series, it broke that 20 minute video into four segments and made a playlist. Every single one of those videos are gonna get views and get watch time uh, instead of one video and people dropping off of that. So break it into segments was number one. Number two was creating hook videos outside of your regular schedule, like videos meant to kind of, you know, try to be viral, meant to rank in search. And number three is batch producing. Now this is probably the greatest tip for really upping your consistency because we know You've got families, you've got kids, you've got schedules, you've got stuff to do, you've got a full-time job. And so how can you double your videos? Batch producing is an anchor strategy for people who really want to be consistent on YouTube, but have extreme uh, you know, time shortages. Life mm -hmm. is intense. Mm -hmm. And batch producing is where you take one day one block of time, it doesn't have to be a day. You say, I'm going to, instead of just setting the lights lights on, camera up, mic set up, do all this stuff, I'm instead of just shooting one video, I'm gonna try to shoot four in a batch. One of the ways now with video influencers, I think we've posted about 160 videos during kind of our first, a little over a year, lots of interviews. Uh, you know, Benji and I are posting these videos together. This is our story. Benji is a manager of all the stuff that uh, him and Judy and the family are doing on YouTube. He consults and he's helping other uh, YouTubers. He's on the phone with them. He's doing you know different deals. He's connecting. So he's got a full schedule. I've got a tech channel. I'm doing all of this kind of stuff. I've got my lifestyle channel, Sean Thinks. I uh, you know speak. We do all this stuff. So so we have these busy schedules. How do we stay consistent? And over the last year, how have we done videos? One of the things is batch producing. So Benji and I would get together. We also live in different states. Did we, did we mention that? I live in Las Vegas, he lives in Seattle. And so we get together and we plan out, we, before we get together, we plan out in Google Docs, what, what's our, what are our topics, what is the research we need to do? We're sharing notes back and forth, we're on the phone, we're texting, and we get a whole Google Doc ready with four to eight videos. And then when we happen to be in the same state, we get together to do a project, we go on a little tour, then we do a batch pr uh, production of videos. And sometimes that's allowed us to have two months worth of content that was all shot at once. Is that powerful to start batch producing? So the number three is how could you plan out your videos and start batch producing so that you could be more consistent, double your videos and therefore double your views? Boom, and I know a lot of YouTubers actually do this as well. Actually, our friends, Laura, Vitaly, they have a cooking channel, and they actually do this. Literally, they create almost all their video content at the beginning. Laura Vitaly not only is a huge YouTube star, now she's a TV star, so like, if there's anybody that has an excuse, it's her, and her and her husband, Joe, they've been batch producing, I don't know how long, but they do it very, very well, you know, and like, that's the cool thing about YouTube and when you upload is uh, people don't have to know that, right? Like you don't have to make that a public thing. You don't have to tell your audience that. It's like, hey, I created this video at the beginning of the month. Just tape it as if that it was going up that day. So it's very powerful. You guys, uh, there's about, I wanna say like 170 of you guys, 171 of you guys on the YouTube view page right now. Welcome. Please leave a comment. I'm trying to respond to your comments as quick as possible. There's already about 162 of them. So we appreciate you guys. And I want to talk about the fourth uh, strategy for doubling your views. Start a new show, a simple show. You know, uh, uh, there's two parts to this I want to talk about and I would love to hear uh, Sean's perception. 
Number one, is there a simple show you can just create, like on a Monday? I used to do this thing called Coffee Mondays because I loved coffee, I love food, my channel was about food, I would do some coffee content, so I did uh, Coffee Mondays. And this really had nothing to do with my regular content, recipes or eating food. It was just me sipping some coffee, interviewing people, talking about topics I had a, you know interest in. Now, does that fit for everybody? I don't know, maybe not. However, what are some kind of shows that you can create? You know, like things that you can in between your regular content. So we're talking about, you know, doubling your views, doubling your uploads. This is just another idea. Another way to think about this is, I know this is going to sound crazy cuz who wants another channel? but starting a second channel. I'll give you a great example. My wife, Judy, originally was a beauty guru, okay? She did beauty stuff, but she was so much more than that. She wanted to do some fun things. You know, we were living together at the time. We, we had some funny, you know, clips we wanted to put up. So instead of creating like another segment, I suggested to start It's Judy's Life, which became the daily vlog. I never thinking that was ever going to amount to really anything. I just said, "Hey, if you have this fun content, why don't you just start a second second channel?" Now, yes, we're not like um, suggesting that everybody start another channel, but maybe it makes sense. Maybe there's something you want to put out to the world just as much, if not more, secretly maybe, and that's something you can consider. It's worked for us. It's worked for many people. But regardless, if you start a new channel or you upload to yours, the point is. Think of shows, or maybe you've already thought of shows that you could put up or segments and follow it up. Just do it, upload it. Yeah. And so, number four is to start a simple show. And one of the reasons this is so powerful is because I was talking with somebody uh, that was kind of coaching about YouTube recently. And uh, what they're saying was, like, how could I double my videos, like the amount I'm posting? Because my videos are so complex. I have a lot of B roll, extra footage to shoot. The editing is complex. I want them to, you know, have music and all these kinds of things. And sometimes, and that's good. Maybe that's like your basic video, but that's what we say start a simple show in addition to your basic content. That's why you could do like a quick coffee Monday where you're like, hey, this is a three minute thing. I do this and you make it a lot simpler. The tip is simplify things. What could you do like a quick product review Friday, you know, and where you start showing up on a more consistent basis, but you, you, you stop letting perfectionism hold you back. You kind of stop letting like that, the over analyzing it and making it harder than it has to be. Take it way, 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 way back. And then, you know, what could you add? For instance, I mean, just to give an example. So we're doing these Google Hangouts. Two weeks ago, we did it. We did another one. This is going to take us, um, you know, the hour that we're on here. We'll do Q&A in just a second. But it's adding another video in addition to the interview that went up this week. So it could be a live show. You know, YouTube Live's about to happen. It could be just a simple, you know, you start reviewing books and you review a book a week. Like whatever's relevant for your audience, but keep it really simple and now you're doubling your video. So we're gonna jump into more tips in just a second, a couple practical things. Uh, the challenge for this month is to double your posting. And we're sharing seven strategies like batch producing so that you can start posting more consistently to YouTube, but that's the challenge. So we wanna hear from the comments. If you haven't told us where you're watching from, we wanna hear where you're watching from and where you're joining us. But we also wanna hear how many videos are you posting a week right now and what would it mean to double? So if you are posting one a week, the challenge is to go to two a week. And if you double your videos, you'll double your views and you'll gain even more momentum on your channel. If you appreciate the live broadcast, hit the thumbs up and I'm gonna kick this to Benji, but I'm gonna recap the points and then we'll get into the next point. So number one, the first thing is consider breaking your videos into smaller segments. If it's a 10 minute video, make it two five minute videos. Number two, create content that reaches beyond your subscribers. So maybe your routine is serving your audience. What if you started every once in a while creating a video that's more of a hook video? Now I saw a question, what's a hook video? A hook video is a video that's meant to like rank in search. So maybe normally your videos don't uh, serve audience, your audience that doesn't know you. You know, if you're like, hey guys, thanks for being here, talking to your audience, that's what people who already know you, but a hook video, would be like when Benji made, uh, as his cookie channel, best guacamole recipe, that video ranks in search, 
So now people discover his cooking channel, whether he posts new videos or not. It could be a video that gets shared a lot because you have a family vlog channel and it's a funny dance, viral meme type of a video where it's the latest Disney movie. And when people search, you know, Frozen 2 covers, uh, your video shows up and it attracts new audience. That's what a hook video is. The third tip is to batch produce videos. The fourth tip is to consider doing a simple show, adding just like a Monday motivation a Friday product review, a Saturday thoughts video, like something, a simple show added to your schedule. If you double your videos, you double your views. And now the fifth tip is consider getting help. Benji, can you share on that? Getting help. It's so obvious, yet people don't pursue this. And it's a lot easier than you think. Now, I wanna give you guys a great example and a little bit of confession. I don't really upload to Benjamin TV very much these days, right? Like I, I'm still passionate about food. I'm still, you know, like, uh, you know, cooking and, you know, recipes are still my thing. However, I just don't have a lot of time. Right now, my focus is video influencers. This channel right here is my focus. I could not do this without the help of Sean. And when I say help, I mean, we're partnered 50 50. We both bring our own powers to this. But the point is, I get a lot of help from him. Now, backing it up to Judy, right? One thing that a lot of people don't know is I help Judy manage its Judy's life, manage its Judy time, its mommy's life, all the different channels that we have. And getting help is so important. Now, I have to give credit to Judy. She literally uploads a vlog every day. She still uploads at least, usually, one vlog, one episode or one video to it's Judy time, it's mommy's life. So she's working really hard. However, the amount of projects she's had, she has three kids at 1.3 under three, right? And we like to do a lot of things. The only way she could do that is with help, right? Me, I'm focusing on the business, business stuff, the things behind the scenes. We have a team of people even beyond that. Even Sean, one of the reasons why I'm so confident in working with Sean is because literally for years, Sean has come in on special projects and take things, edit things, even upload things. So like ha getting help has always been a very significant part uh, of our business model of the way we do things so even the biggest youtubers like Judy will get help now don't go don't get me wrong there are some youtubers that continue to do things one man band but rarely do I see people scale up and even in the beginning when you're just starting there's a lot of ways to get help from people and you don't necessarily have to uh, make a lot of money you don't have to have a lot of subscribers uh, and Sean I would love to hear from you some of the ways you've done it and uh, suggestions you have for the viewers watching yeah so uh, getting help is you know it makes kind of sense because you probably have felt I know you have you felt overwhelmed when you're a youtuber you wear 30 different hats. You're the videographer, the gaffer, the director, the script writer, the content creator, the talent, the video editor, the social media specialist, the marketing manager. You know what I mean? Like being a YouTuber is intense. And so I, I want to just applaud you and encourage you that you aspire to do this, that you aspire to create online videos. Make no mistake about it, it's real work. And it takes a lot of mental power, creative power. And so if you're ever feeling discouraged or overwhelmed, like really be encouraged, but consider this thought of getting help. And your thought might be, well, like, you know, well, I can't hire anybody. That's not necessarily what we mean. So Benji had that great example. Video influencers, for instance, was a way to do something who in your life could be the Sean and the Benji? You know what I mean? And it, this, it, we, here's a big tip. That's not something that like you meet somebody and then you jump into that like the next day. You know, we have had all this history, we've have had years, but it became this awesome partnership. And so now we have this thing called, which you know, you're watching and you've seen video influencers. It's not a solo thing. We like, you know, strengthen numbers. So we were able to team up. Who though maybe in your family could help you? So is it a brother or sister who you could say, hey, I'll do this for you if you start helping me do this. And you kind of have like an exchange. Who could you maybe have that like kind of interns or something? Like maybe there's somebody you say, hey, look, I do have this YouTube channel happening. You could be a part of it for a few months or, or something and, uh, and help me do this. 
or you know, just considering getting help maybe in other areas of your life. Like what else could you offload so you could focus more on YouTube? Just the idea, I think it's so important as a content creator, which is what you are. You're an artist, you're a content creator, you're a video influencer. And this mentality, even if you can't do it today, it should be kind of in your journal, in your plans, because the only way eventually you're gonna hit a lid and when you can add help, uh, eventually maybe you can hire somebody part-time or just outsource a certain task. Just this idea of getting help can be so powerful. And, and we're hoping, the reason we wanna do live calls like this is that it would spark something. Oh yeah, there is somebody that I could collab with. There is somebody who you know we could build some momentum if we just work together on a project or on a series of videos. One kind of real practical tip here is you don't need to like hire an employee, but maybe you invest some money by doing a huge batch of content. So I'm about to do a project here in Vegas. I'm about to do a video series. It's gonna be about 10 videos and I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna, it's all gonna be in one playlist. And so I will hire somebody just to shoot that couple hours and because I can't do it by myself. And so they come over, we'll shoot all 10 videos, but that's a lot of content. You know, we do it all in one big batch and then we maybe don't work together for a couple months or something like that, right? So. Think about ways of how you can get help, which ties into the next one, which is also teaming up and really building a team. And I know Benji mm -hmm. is great at this. There's a lot of tips on beyond getting help, starting to think with a team mentality, Benji. Absolutely. So I want to say there's a huge difference between just getting help and building a team. A teamwork makes the dream work. There's a difference. When somebody's helping you, it could be like a one-time thing, right? Even if it's kind of a long-term thing. When you create a team, you have committed people. You have people that want to help you accomplish maybe as much as you, the goal. Sean and I, we're a team, okay? I, I was saying I get help from him, but truly, we're a team. And a great example of this, and this might you know, make more sense for somebody that you know, is uh, maybe a uh, higher subscriber level, maybe has the income to create a team, but this example is my favorite, Dan Sember. It's an annual fundraiser that we do. It's basically a telethon where we're live for 24 hours and we dance for donations in December. It's an amazing thing. When Judy and I first started, it was just her and I, a laptop, and we raised $5,000. We thought that was a big deal. Five years later, we're literally raising a quarter million dollars. We had 1.5 million views in that 24 hours. We trended on Twitter. We did some amazing things, like crazy things. When we're saying trending on Twitter, we trended above Star Wars the day it came out. That is crazy. And there's a reason for it. There's a team. It no longer is just Judy and I. If you actually watch those, you can actually watch those, and maybe I'll try to link it later. We have a broadcast going with probably 18 people. Now, our core team, is built of like five or six people that are with us throughout the year, including Sean. And we would not be able to do those things, hit those milestones, raise that money, make Dan Sember what it is without a team because they're committed. These are people that are like, just as much as you wanna raise that money, they wanna raise that money. And it's a difference. Like we do have people that we kind of hire for that day. And I'd say they're definitely passionate and committed, but it's like they show up that day. The team though, they're there for months. In fact, this year is gonna be the biggest year. We're gonna actually, I'm gonna put it out to the world right now, it's kinda of scary. We're gonna raise half a million dollars. And there's no way that I can fathom Judy and I doing it on our own, at least at our subscriber level, the way we've been doing it. And we have to give credit to the team. It's so powerful, uh, this idea of having a team. And I would definitely say the most successful YouTubers out there have a team whether it's two people, three people, 10 people, 20 people have a legit team. And there's so much you see, you don't see behind the scenes. And I want to give credit to our team, right? Like we have somebody working PR, we have management, we have an MCN, we have people like Sean, uh, Austin, we have people like Stacy helping us on social media. We have so much going on behind the scenes and that's the difference. And when you have a team, like it's just more fun.
right? And I'll hand it back over to Sean in a second, but I just want you to consider like, how big do you want this to be? Because you don't have to, you can just get one time help, whatever. But if you wanna make something great, something amazing, think like a team leader now. Think about creating that team now, or what team can you join to uh, make those amazing things happen? Yeah, and so I don't want to see long, but I feel like Benji and I are really synced up on this, like as he began to say, think bigger. I think it's, we, we can't share, this could be its own Google Hangout. When it comes to like teaming up, one thing to really consider, again, is, is having a bigger vision and a skill to develop is actually kind of leadership. And, you know, it doesn't have to be also like, uh, uh, what Benji's talking about when you have like maybe management and PR. I saw in the comments, somebody was talking about their family team. How can you step up with the vision with as a leader and to say, hey, I, I wanna take this seriously. Let's build this, let's work together. Will you help me? You know, this is developing what's called EQ, emotional intelligence and enlisting people in the vision. You gotta be able to cast vision you got to you know be able to to lead people benji's been great at that because now we we rally around what benji and judy do because they have this leadership and this vision so we'll volunteer our time for dance Sember because it's this incredible incredible thing that's changing lives that they've built over the years so they've had a vision for something though they had to lead the way by thinking outside of you're not just doing youtube what is it that you're doing and what's the meaning and the emotion and the why and the substance that's inside of what you're doing and how can you master your messaging and communicate your messaging in a way that people say yeah i want to be a part of that like this is significant so that's just kind of some thinking to say just think bigger and even before i think it's so important like we don't let your small youtube channel make you small-minded right think big think like a, you know think like you have a million subscribers act like you have a million subscribers let your branding be like you have a million subscribers, even if you have 10, right? When your actions and your behaviors and your mindset and your vision and your leadership is at that level, what you'll watch is that everything will begin to follow. When you're developing your skills and you're continu continuing to level up, it's gonna make a huge difference, which brings us to our last point. We're so pumped to get to Q&A. So let us know what your questions are anything related to YouTube, online marketing, social media, but we'll recap and we'll hit number seven. Consider breaking your videos into smaller uh, segments. Uh, create hook videos, content that reaches beyond your regular schedule. Number three, batch produce your videos. Number four, consider adding a simple show, something basic, something simple, so that you could add another video to your weekly schedule. Number five, consider getting help, maybe on just a project. Number six, develop the mindset of really building a team, a family team, of, of enlisting your spouse or your partner or your significant other to kind of help at, at another level and to be a little more focused and to really help you build this thing. And then number seven, and to be honest, it's like the simplest things that I think are sometimes the most significant is hustle harder. Like if, I mean, if you really want to do this thing and I know that if you're watching right now, you do like you care about building your influence, building your income, but ultimately so you can make a greater impact is, is to hustle harder, you know, is to really grind it out more to find new passion to find greater focus and to join us for this september challenge to say i'm gonna double my videos like i want to double my views i'm gonna hustle harder and find a way to post more to be more consistent to get more organized to grab my planner and to schedule things out more uh intentionally because you do have it within you right i know you know you could find more energy you could find a little block on your schedule. You can find a way, you know, there's something that's so powerful about the human spirit that can find a way to overcome obstacles, discouragement, setbacks, break through barriers and just hustle harder. Because look, it comes down to the simple thing that if you post a video a week and it gets a hundred views, if you post two videos, now you got 200 views, your channel's growing more subscribers, more videos out and out in the world that could be attracting people to you. But it does take work. And so we kind of come back to this thing. Number seven, Benji of hustling harder. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll take it even more simple and maybe outside of YouTube, you know, people ask me like, how is it that you work out? So, so much like, how is it that you love working out so much? 
I do love working out so much and you know what it is a challenge for me I just got back from a trip where I wasn't working out really for like a whole week and I got back right into it the day afterwards why I can do that is because of my why my motivation okay so for me I want to run a marathon one day if I'm gonna run a marathon one day I can't be doing like one mile runs you know every few weeks I've got to be training for that I've got to be putting in the extra miles in fact I was planning on running six miles yesterday and I did 10 miles I did an extra four miles with that motivation in mind so what is your motivation right I mean like I think uh, hustling hard anybody can do that that's what I love about it but the people that do there's something inside of here something inside of here that's driving you to hustle harder, that's driving you to double your uploads, that's driving you to, after you've uploaded, done all that post-production work, to comment, to respond, to tweet, to post on Instagram, to go crazy and do Snapchat, Instagram video, and all this stuff, and maybe do live, right? That kind of hustle is absolutely worth it. I've never ran extra miles or a long distance and ever regretted it. I've always loved it. I've appreciated it. I felt very grateful, you know, uh, especially the longer the run, like my half marathons. I know when I do finally run a marathon, like that was amazing. So it's the same thing with YouTube. I, I can promise you, if you upload 200 videos, 2000 videos, you're gonna learn something in that process. Maybe the outcome might not be what you thought, but you are gonna learn something. Great example here. My wife, Judy, and Sean and I were just talking about like how amazing she is because of the sheer fact that she's uploaded so many times. And maybe Sean can like double check, but I, I, I really believe she's uploaded at least a few thousand videos, if not more. If you actually add in all her Facebook videos, it's crazy. And one of the things that she's gained in the process is storytelling. She didn't like set out to like become this beauty guru to do storytelling, but it's just what came out of all those uploads. She knows how to edit things to evoke a certain feeling. So I promise you, if you do the same thing, you upload double the amount of uh, videos this month, you upload 200, 2000, 20,000, right? Something crazy, something good is gonna come out of it. So the hustle will be worth it. And I just wanted to reference somebody. I'm gonna call you out, Ashton. You left a comment, this is her comment. I just started and I have three subs. How do I get my first 100 to 1,000? I find that people don't bother with me because I just started. Well, Ashton, I went to your page and I saw, I like looked at how many uploads you had. You had three uploads, three videos. Let me just tell you, three videos is just like testing the waters. Like It's like your toe getting dipped in. You need to go all in and dive in, okay? When you have 30 uploads, come back and ask that question. I would suggest when you have 100 uploads, I'm telling you, like one of the reasons that people aren't subscribing is because you've only got three uploads. It's gonna take a lot of work to build that authority. It's gonna take a lot of work to build that trust, to get the kind of subscribers that'll help you get new subscribers. So that's what I'll say about hustle. Hand it off to you, Sean. Yeah, so we're so pumped to get into questions, but last kind of thought on this is, again, the last number seven is, is hustle harder, right? And I think like at the end of the day, we, we're here because we not only want to help some practical tips, but we also, Hope are hoping to inspire and motivate you to just eliminate excuses to say, you know, no excuses. I'm going to make this happen. And one of the th common themes around 99% of the interviews that we've done of all these different YouTubers from all these different backgrounds is they have this like hustle element when it comes to this stuff. Benji mentioned Judy, and I love that example because I did the math and found that she posted about 80 times per year on its Judy time when we averaged that out since 2009. Okay. So for seven years, she's posted eight, eight, uh, 80 times a year just on her makeup channel during that time though, over the last seven years, like, so consider that's, that's a, that's almost a decade, right? Like she's, so over that time she added in having three kids, come on. Say, she added in having some kids. She added in starting a daily vlog channel on top of that original makeup channel. And then she added in a mommy channel on top of that. 
we talked to, you know, Nikki Philippi, who's a good friend of mine, and we've interviewed her a couple times. And she talked about just grinding when she was starting out for six months, going to Starbucks every day, working like 15 hour days to build up her channel. We have uh, Roberto Blake watching, who is an awesome YouTuber. And uh, thanks so much for being here, man. And he, look, listen to this though. He posts 30 times a month already. So he's asking like, <laughs> how do I double my views? I was like, post 60 times, you know, which is something that like YouTube channels like Collider and these different channels where they have a team, they post multiple times a day. So that's definitely a strategy, but that's, this is a common thing, whether it's the skinny confidential, who's more of like a, you know, a blogger and does some YouTube, they, they just grind, like they're on that hustle. So we want to share with you to say, how can I eliminate excuses? Uh, Heather is on my team here in Vegas and we work on a lot of different projects, homeschool mom, two kids, you know, uh, and is not only helping, like has, has a job like, working with me, but then is doing this homeschool channel and is batch producing, shooting on her iPhone, and is committing to posting once a week to say, I'm gonna be consistent. So, so you know, we definitely have empathy if you're facing, you know, busy schedule, or if you're a single mom, or if you have health challenges. And those are all real things that no matter who you see when you watch them online, there's real stuff happening in people's lives. But like Benji said, find that like motive, that driving force, that fire, that why to really step up. And we'll kind of transition here to Q and A for this September challenge though. So let us know in the comments uh, if you're with us and what you're gonna commit to do for September. The September challenge is doubling your videos. Now Roberto Blake, it's gonna be a tough one, man, if you could do it. You gotta go to 60 videos <laughs> in September. But you know, for a lot of us, if, if you're posting once a week, you know, to double that. And it to it, it forces your mind to say, okay, well, what is my scheduling gonna have to be like? What's my creativity gonna be have to be like? What am I gonna have to shift to make this happen? But what's amazing is that as you start to work on that problem, you're gonna find a way. You can find it, you can figure it out. And here's the cool thing: if you post, you know, 10 times a month and you try to do 20, but you only do 15 you still won like that. You mean the effort and the strategy already brought you to a, a level of producing a whole nother, you know, set of videos. So that's the challenge. Let us know in the comments. Are you going to do the September video influencers challenge? I'm going to double my videos this month and therefore double my views. So let us know what your channel is, mm -hmm. how much you're posting right now. And if you can jump into the hashtag September challenge, uh, for video influencers. Cause again, we're here, we're serious about your success. We are here to help you build your influence, build your income and make a greater impact. We're doing, we're on a mission, man. We mm -hmm. care about you building your influence, having success, supporting your family, getting your message out, sharing messages that matter, making a greater impact. And so with that, we want to hit up some questions. Benji, I don't know if you have any, mm -hmm. um, let us know your questions. Let us know if you're joining the challenge, but post your questions in the comments. We're gonna stay on here for uh, a little while and we'll answer your questions. Share this with somebody that needs to see this and uh, hit the like button if you appreciated this live broadcast. Benji, let's do some Q&A. Absolutely, so I'll just go to one of the latest is, um, okay, so it says, I want to start YouTube, but I can't afford a camera. Well, let me ask you, like, what are you typing this on? Are you typing this on your phone? Are you typing this on your laptop, your computer? Not being able to afford a camera is really not a, a, a great excuse anymore because so many devices have a camera. We're talking almost all smartphones have a camera, right? Almost all laptops have a camera, including microphone, right? And a lot of computers will come with it too. So like you can go on Craigslist, Sean, I don't know if you want to try to find one or not, but you can probably go on Craigslist and find something dirt cheap. You don't need very much. In fact, if you have never even recorded, maybe uh, the reason uh, you can't afford a camera is because maybe you're young. I don't know what it is, a Nadia. But the point is, maybe you just need to get a start. When Judy first started, it was the crappiest little digital camera ever. I mean, I don't even think it was $100. It might have been like $79. And Sean is showing right now. I did it. Ben, I, I just went to, I went to Craigslist. I typed in Canon Elf, and we have 85 bucks. Drive a 
cross town and pick up a camera and look it even comes with a tripod and uh you could set it up you could set it up just like that there's a there's a ready-made youtube setup for under 100 dollars. and if you don't have a hundred dollars work 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 and you know nadia we don't want to we don't want to discount that question okay like uh, especially if you're young or if you're in a hard place or something like that yes you're gonna need equipment right but if you have a phone even, okay, a phone, a smartphone, and in fact, a lot of companies will give away certain smartphones, right, just for uh, getting your monthly uh, uh, subscription to a cell phone coverage. So you can use that. It's okay because in the beginning, all you need to do is record videos, period, okay, or even borrow a friend's. So I, I just want to follow that up with, you know, there's a lot of different reasons. People tell themselves stories of why they can't do something. What I would challenge you, just like when I, we challenge you to double your uploads, just decide right now, literally right now, look at yourself in the mirror, look at yourself in the camera, wherever, and decide that you're gonna get that camera, Nadia. So if you're out there uh, doing a YouTube channel, wherever you are in your YouTube career or video influencers uh, position, just decide to do whatever it is you're gonna do. Decide to upload twice as many videos this month. Don't tell yourself or don't listen to the stories you've told yourself of why you can't do it or why you haven't done it. Just decide right now you're gonna do it. Um, and that's the answer to the first question, Nadia. Let's get super tactical on this next question. Danny asks, and Benji could share some killer stuff on this. I'm starting a cooking channel sh uh, soon. Any tips on how to start in this janeer? Uh, would be nice to have recommendations. So here's a couple tips and then I'll kick it to Benji. Um, by the way, cooking channels are like one of the best channels to have on YouTube because there's so much interest uh, in, in a practical sense of people looking for recipes. The reason I know this is Benji inspired me to just throw a couple of videos up a few years ago, how to bake salmon in a tinfoil boat. I did a one on how to barbecue corn. And to, these, to this day, those videos have hundreds of thousands of views and um, you know, are, are coming in. And basically here's the tip is, is cooking videos can rank in search because they're so practical. So the philosophy behind ranking videos is when people are like, you know, I know I wanna do salmon in the oven. It's, you know, they type in like how to bake salmon in an oven with lemon, and then your video can show up. So a huge tip would be to try to get, you know, your videos titled well, and of course optimized well so that they rank in search. But I think the the other layer there is to look for the unserved areas. So if if somebody, you know, if there's a full front page of barbecue chicken, there's 10 pages on YouTube of barbecue chicken, that might not be the angle, but what are the cooking videos that you know how to do that are underserved? You know, what types of cuisine, what types of categories? And when you start to be the one who shows up behind all of those searches, and this is true for it, this you know, applies across the board, that's why I created a course called Video Ranking Academy, because it's really ranking videos is one of the most powerful forces on YouTube. But when you start to rank those cooking videos, you get what my friend Sunny calls views while you snooze. And so now your channel grows on autopilot because for Benji, like, like he mentioned, like he's focusing on a lot of other things, but yet his cooking channel still grows. Why? Because people type in guacamole recipe, boom, he's there. They type in green smoothie, you know, recipe, he's there. So he shows up on the other side of search and now your channel grows on autopilot. Totally, and I'll just follow up real quick and uh, I'll answer another question on the feed. You know, the cool thing about cooking, right? And this is kind of the funny thing. People that are really good at cooking usually aren't good at video. <laughs> They're not good like at recording or editing and stuff. I'm, I'm probably one of those included. Now I've learned how to do that, but it's not my favorite thing to do. So lately what I've been doing is just using my Snapchat, okay? And don't think because Snapchat doesn't save, uh, you know, you can save your Snapchat stories now. Uh, it doesn't save at a very high quality that uh, that's not going to be good. Now, I wouldn't suggest trying to make like the best cooking channel just from Snapchat videos, but it's a good start. And the reason I say that is I personally, to this day, after being a food YouTuber, after cooking like thousands of dishes, 
I still go to YouTube and I look for recipes of the recipe I'm trying to cook and I don't care about the quality. In fact, some of the best video tips I've gotten about cooking were just like casual videos someone did with like a digital, you could kind of tell like they didn't really edit a lot. In fact, some of them they don't edit. It's just like a straight on 15 minute video. But like when you want to master a recipe, you're like willing to watch it. You kind of know that you need to watch it. Like if you're a, a cook or a chef in here, you guys know like there's a lot of context in cooking, like the little bits in between the recipe kind of lines, right, that you need to get. So like don't worry about the format or the length or whatever, especially when you're starting. Just do it the way you know you can. Like if I had to give myself advice, I should start uploading videos that skip the whole editing process. And one of the ways you can actually do that is with YouTube Capture, okay? So I'm like literally uh, challenging myself. YouTube Capture is like a real-time editing and content creation app that YouTube offers for free on smartphones. And because you have a, a selfie camera and a forward-facing camera, it's super easy. In fact, I did one, I just didn't upload it. So like, there's a lot of ways to do it. Don't worry about the quality at first. Um, I'm not sure if whoever asked that question was like a newbie um, or if they're seasoned, but the point is this, do it your way. In fact, the more different you can do it, the more unique you can do it, the more interesting, and I believe the more popular you could potentially get. Um, Sean, do you have a question or you want me to answer one? Um, I have actually one that'll be uh, pretty helpful. Marlo says, and I've got some super tactical stuff. What's a good average number of potential subscribers gained correlating to amount of time? So initially it, it just varies so much. You can't really say. And so I would say one, if you feel like your channel's not growing fast enough, probably everybody feels that way, right? Like we all wish our channels are growing faster, but don't ever be hard on yourself. It's also different in different niches, right? Like, so some channels grow a lot faster. If you have a very specific niche and the audiences aren't as big, then it's all different. But here's some really practical stuff about just, you know, kind of growing your YouTube channel that if you're watching, you have a YouTube channel. I want you after this broadcast to go in and go to your creator studio to go to analytics on the left side and to go to traffic sources. And this right here is actually going to let you know directly how your channel is actually growing. And you can begin to focus and even create strategies with informed information about the way your channel grows. So in the last 30 days, we've had a little over a quarter million views on video influencers. So that's what we're looking at right here. But it'll let you know right at the top the way that your channel grows, like where subscribers are coming from, how people are discovering you. These are questions you should be asking and then how can I do that better? So for instance, the top for us, the top one's actually suggested videos. So if you get your video showing up in the related videos or at the end of videos, then you are reaching new people, right? It's views from uh, suggestions appearing alongside other videos. The next is YouTube search. And so if you want to grow faster, you want more videos showing up in YouTube search. That's what a ranked video is. If um, I can even make this a little bit bigger. So that's, that's a second way. Um, browse features. That's traffic from the homepage. When people see it in their subscriptions, you could see that. Um, from other YouTube channels, if people link to us. External, that's going to start being like social media from websites and apps. So saying all that, I think it's to say, okay, what are my growth strategies? How can I get, these are the questions we should, and we don't have time for it now, but how can I get my videos to show up in search? Because you're gonna crush it if you do. It's the second reason our channel's growing is because people type in a search and find our videos. That's how, you know, it's ranking videos. How do I get my videos to show up in the right side? And we actually have a lot of content out about this and we haven't mentioned it yet. Make sure to download our guide, videoinfluencers.net forward slash 19 tips, uh, videoinfluencers.net forward slash 19 tips. And there's a link in the description. That guide is 19 things you should do every time you upload a video. And you don't want to take uh, cut corners when you uh, implement those tips and strategies videos to show up in the suggested videos. So if you're executing on those different strategies, now you're going to start seeing those different traffic sources, playlists, external, which is social media, you know, um, video cards and using the YouTube annotations and cards, all these different ways, you know, and, and then optimizing your strategies.
Boom. And I just want to acknowledge the 200 plus people that are watching this. That's actually the highest that we've had this whole hour. So if you're sharing this with people, thank you so much. We would love for you to share this with anybody that you think would benefit from hearing it. We love the comments. There's over 400 comments. I'm about to answer one right now. My last uh, Q&A that I'm going to answer. And thank you for hitting that like button. Boom, boom, boom. So uh, La Flasa Ramirez or Flaca Ramirez, I'm sorry if I uh, didn't pronounce that correctly, says, hey guys, I'm watching from Colombia. I post three videos a week. I really want to do a simple show like the coffee something that would be get me to four videos a week. Thank you so much. I have a question about social media. I have 40,000 on YouTube. I've been there for two years, but I'm struggling on social media. I can't seem to have more than 2,000 in Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Any tips, please? So yes, my suggestion number one, if you've got an active audience on YouTube already, that's great. Work that audience. Let them know. If they're on YouTube and subscribing to you, most likely they're on social media. So call to action, just like what we said, you know, like ask your audience to like, ask your audience to comment, ask your audience or share with them that you do have an Instagram or Facebook and mention it. It, you know, like it, it's, it boggles my mind that people don't mention that, right? Like this is the thing about YouTube. You, they only see as many videos as you upload or at, they're only going to see your videos as many times as they visit YouTube. The thing about Instagram, Facebook, they're going there probably every single day. Let's just, you, you, I bet you can agree with me, multiple times a day, right? So it's so important for that one chance you have on YouTube to make sure to do a call to action, which just means sharing with your viewers during your videos. Sometimes it might mean mentioning it at the beginning of the video, but that's the point. Uh, second little tip, to grow outside of your YouTube channel. So like to grow your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter outside. Keep this in mind, just like we've always taught that whatever the value is that people are gonna get out of your videos is why they're gonna probably subscribe. Same thing on social media. If you ha have a small audience here, you've gotta create some kind of value, like in your uh, photos, which I noticed that you do like beauty kind of stuff. Make sure your video, your photos have some kind of value where someone can learn from it. Someone can be inspired from it. Because once you do that and you utilize hashtags, people are gonna wanna or follow you on Instagram because of that value. So keep that in mind. Um, hopefully that helps answer not only your question, um, but others on how to grow on social media. Thank you so much, you guys, for and watching. Actually, Benji, we love this. Find one, find one more, because I want to answer one okay. more. Find one more in just a second, and yep. because I'm just so pumped, we're hanging out. Come on, it's a Saturday, and I want to make sure we'll do a few house. We'll do two more questions. Uh, Benji will hit one in just a second. I got a really good one. But hey, thanks so much for being here. Definitely hit the like button on this broadcast and share this broadcast out. Obviously, it'll be you can watch the replay. We talked about how to double your views by doubling your videos and seven strategies for how to do that. So if you're just joining us, make sure to watch the replay. You can get all seven of those strategies. And our September challenge is will you join us doubling your videos, the amount of videos you're posting? Will you implement these strategies? So let us know in the comments if you haven't, let us know where you're watching from, how much you're posting per week right now, and if you're gonna join the September challenge. Say yes, there's something powerful about verbally typing it out and saying, I'm gonna commit to this. I'm gonna make it happen this month. Um, you know, yeah, school starting, I can do it on nights and weekends. I'm gonna put in the hustle, I'm gonna find a way to do it. So join the September Video Influencers Challenge of doubling your videos, and we can't wait to hear the stories of the results that happen from that. But Honey and Rise has a great question that says, when starting out, is it better to keep videos focused on one consistent uh, genre or genre or to post a wide variety? So there's kind of two answers to this, but one really stands out as what, what really is kind of a growth secret. And a reason I want to you know, answer this is because I believe this will serve everybody. I think that when you're just starting out, there's the, the reason you should experiment and post any kind of videos is because you're trying to figure out your messaging you're learning, you're practicing. And so we always encourage people to do that. But without question, and this could be maybe the one of the biggest takeaways, without question, focus is power. 
without question, if you want to break through today, a lot of people say, I want to be like this YouTuber who just talks about whatever they want. I want to be about this YouTuber and just kind of like sh have a channel that's about everything. And the problem is if you try to have a channel about everything, it'll end up becoming about nothing. And I say this a lot. If you try to reach everybody, you'll end up reaching nobody. So in answer to your question, a consistent engineer genre is so important. And Benji mentioned er earlier, Laura Vitale, that what's so interesting is almost like they planned the growth of their YouTube channel, but it took a lot of discipline. And what happened was they just said, look, we're going to create a cooking show and we're going to stick to that. And there was a temptation. Even people in the comments said, hey, can you start doing makeup tutorials? Hey, can you start doing some other stuff? So they created other channels, but they kept, they kept their main channel focused. We can say that, you know, for video influencers, we created this channel, but we've also kept it very focused. Like this is a channel, you know why you're here because you want to build your influence, income and impact with online video. So we're not posting cooking videos. We're not posting makeup tutorials. We're posting videos that help people with online video. So my biggest tip is, is your channel, when people land on your channel in five to 10 seconds, do they know exactly what it's about? Is it a gaming channel and a specific type of game? Is it a cooking channel? Is it makeup and beauty and hair? When channels are focused, when you have a really strong, clear brand, it helps you stand out in a noisy world of so many different YouTube channels. So if you can work on your branding and your focus, it really can be a huge, huge tip. So the answer kind of honey and rise is, I would say that if you can be focused, build your channel up around a clear niche, They've said it like this in online marketing a lot, that the riches are in the niches, meaning it's not when you try to be really general, but it's when you get really specific and really stay disciplined around that, that you can experience great, great results online. Love it. So I have one more question I wanna answer from Justin and Sarah Vlogs. I find the vlog world super saturated. I feel like our growth has been decent, but I find it hard to rank for anything or get in front of other eyes besides my friends. And Justin and Sarah, I did go and check out your, your, your vlog channel. Love how many uploads you've had. I can speak to you guys as a vlogger, and my perception is this. I don't think it goes for everybody, but I think it's a majority. Keep this in mind, most of the daily vloggers out there that are very popular or gain like a, a good subscriber base got popular or familiar or uh, uh, famous for something else. My wife included, Judy of It's Judy Time. She was doing makeup videos for years before she ever did her daily vlog. And even before that, she was uploading little things here and there. So she already built context. She built a relationship and most important, she gained trust from an audience from another channel and then started the daily vlog. It's so easy then to start a vlog because what, what happens is you can vlog anything you want and people will watch because they like you. They trust you, right? Like it's more than just like, you know, being entertained. They're like comfortable having you on their computer. How many viewers I've talked to literally just open up their computer and just have it playing. It's like having a friend talk to you, except it's a, unfortunately a one-sided conversation, right? So if you're just starting, and I didn't get to check uh, Justin and Sarah, if you had another channel, but keep that in mind. Like the if you're having slow growth, there's a reason for it. Like. Uh, the average person's day isn't like extremely uh, entertaining, okay? Like I can tell you as a daily vlog, there's some days like, damn, this, this is like kind of boring, right? But people watch us because they've already built that relationship and that trust. My tip for you and other vloggers, if you don't wanna start another channel, maybe you just wanna do the vlogs, but you wanna grow an audience, right? You're gonna still have to duplicate that same strategy of building a relationship, gaining that trust, so that people just wanna watch you no matter what. My suggestion is, especially if you do have an amazing life, right? Say there are interesting things, which I think most people have some things that are interesting or exciting or entertaining. Take those parts of your vlog and upload them individually. So I would actually back up. Instead of doing, 
a whole daily vlog, just do many kind of vlogs on specific searchable content. In fact, I'm gonna go back to your guys' vlog. I notice a lot of your stuff is 10 minutes, eight minutes, five minutes, six minutes, nine minutes. So I, I'm guessing those are pretty full vlogs. What if you did 30 second videos, 60 second videos around specific types of content that people would be very interested in. They didn't have to wait through five or 10 minutes to get to that interesting part. You might actually see that people are searching for things like funny videos or a certain location or a, a, a restaurant or something specific, an event in a life. And they find your videos and go, wow, I actually like these people. I'm going to subscribe. Especially if you treat that 30 second, 60 second, two minute video as a standalone, but as still a vlog and you do the call to actions like, hey, if you like that little segment of, you know, me, uh, you know, at the uh, Mariners baseball game, I have a daily vlog here to subscribe for more videos like this. Boom. That would be a very practical piece of advice. And also just stepping back, letting you guys realize that these mega famous vloggers, including my wife, they started somewhere else where they already had an influence and were able to transfer those subscribers over more easily. Absolutely. So as we land the plane, just want to acknowledge some people. Thanks so much for being on here. It's awesome hanging out on the weekend or whether you're watching this on the replay. And a lot of people are joining the September uh, challenge and people are asking, how do I join it? This is how you join. You type in the comments, you go, I commit to posting and your goal of your videos this month. And I love it. Party of 10 uh, said, uh, I am going to post daily this month. Uh, they're vloggers. That's a lot. Party of 10. There's 10 people in the family that to get in a routine. Thanks for the uh, um, motivation. We just acknowledge you. Thanks so much. And um, Jan, you know, wants to join Jan's reviews. Uh, thanks for joining everything Ella pro. We want to just acknowledge you joining the September challenge. So post in the comments, the September challenge is to double your videos this month. So you can double your views. If you post once a week, your goal this month is to start, you know, crushing it is to, is to turn that up, turn up that posting routine, use some of these seven strategies to be more consistent, quiet little crush, watch it from Seattle is going to go to uh, twice a week instead of just once a week. You're going to do it. We can't wait to hear the results. We're going to check in a month from now be like, okay, what happened? How much did your channel grow? And here's what I really think I can promise you if you commit to this. It's not just going to double. It's going to go a little bit more than that because what happens is, is momentum happens. So if you only get five views a week on one video a week and you post two, I bet you don't get 10 views a week. I bet you get 13. Does that make sense? You know, like, which might seem insignificant, but never despise small beginnings, right? You got to just put in the work. Kenya is saying, I'm going to post two times a week instead of once a week. And uh, so we want to acknowledge you as well. And so kind of the land of playing to Benji, you could uh, sign us off in just a second. A couple uh, resources, right? If you have a download or a guide, videoinfluencers.net forward slash 19 tips. It's in the description below. That's our guide. It's a checklist of everything you should do when you upload a YouTube video. Because again, you don't just want to do quality videos. You do need to know the tips. Like you want to have good tags, good titles, good descriptions. Content is king, but marketing is queen and she runs the household. And so you wanna know those tips, that guide has the tips. Videoinfluencers.net forward slash 19 tips. Let us know where you watched from, how much you're posting now, and how much you're gonna post in September as you join the September challenge to double your views by doubling your videos. Hit the like button, and if you're watching this live or on the replay, share this broadcast, because they can watch the replay, all seven tips of being more consistent, batching, starting a simple show, things like that. Benji. Let's land the plane. Love it. And love that you guys are watching. You're engaged. You guys are commenting. I think that's like a record for how many comments. We're going to try to reply to as many as possible. We just want to thank you. And we want to share with you exactly why we do this. You know, Sean and I, we've been on here for eight years on YouTube, right? But not just YouTube, on social media, you know, like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. We love it all. And we love it all not only because what it's done in our lives. You know, I can speak for myself. Like, it's an exciting life to be a YouTuber, right? To be able to travel, to do things I love, to be able to create opportunities, to do good in the world like Dan Zemmer and raise money for charity. But even more simply, 
you get to express whatever your passion is to the world. In fact, in the interview that we just uploaded this week with Daniel Eisenman, he said it's like the perfect outlet to express your passion. I believe that. Not just on YouTube, but all the platforms. But the reason YouTube is so amazing because it's based on search. And people all over the world are searching certain topics, certain types of content. And we believe if there's something that you're interested in, no matter if you're super entertaining or maybe a little more dry, you know, that you're not about like creating laughs, you're more about info and sharing tips and tricks and stuff, there is a place for you. And whether it's a thousand subscribers or a million subscribers, you can do YouTube your way. And we believe that. And that's why we share these tips, you know, not just our own tips, but we interview other YouTubers. That's why we're just like, can you hear the excitement in our voices? We are so excited about this. And I can tell you, like, Sean and I, we've been doing this for almost two years now, and it's way beyond. You know, any kind of opportunity, you know, like this is not like a big money maker for Sean and I. Right now, it's just because purely we know this has worked for us, for other people we've met, and we know it'll work for you. But you got to put in the hustle, right? You've got to follow some of these tips. You've got to learn from your own experiences to do YouTube your way and find out what it has for you. Yes, indeed. So thanks so much for being on here. September challenge, double your views this month by doubling your videos. Let us know uh, video ideas and other questions you have because when you post questions, hey, if we didn't get to your question, we're sorry we weren't able to answer it, but let us know your question and your biggest challenge on um, YouTube. So during our next batch of videos or on our next hangout, Benji and I can tackle that as well as all the guests and different people that we get to interview to bring you their tips and their best advice. And so thanks again for being here. Thanks for watching on the replay. Hit the like button if you appreciated this broadcast. Share this with somebody. Hit us up on Twitter. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know how you're doing in the comments. And then keep going. Keep crushing it. By the way, so many people are committing, Benji. It's awesome to see. People are saying, you know, what they're going to do, uh, you know, what they're committing to for September. Yeah. Uh, they're talking about, you know, from doubling their their videos to going from five videos a month to 10. So great job, everybody. I mean, that's the thing. Like, it, there's something so powerful when you put that out, you know, into the world, what you're committed to. And we're excited to hear about the results, hear about the lessons that you learn, the discoveries that you make. And uh, until next time, keep building your influence, your income and your impact with online video. Stay tuned because we have more interviews, more videos, more hangouts coming soon. Benji, final words. Peace. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much. We'll talk soon.